All right, so we have just seen the end of the Bay Area Tucson game. So, you know, that game literally just ended like a minute or two ago. And welcome to this week in indoor football where, you know, discussed a lot of things, including, you know, what will be a big subject of today's video yesterday morning. Um, on on Shady Sports Network, a lot of us, you know, again, shout out to all the guys that were there. I mean, Michael Washington, Ralph, Ralph of the um, of the San Antonio Gunslingers, the play by play boys. I mean, Albany defense kid, Dukon, you know, Arena Football State himself, Chris, my boy Chris Voss, and of course, Sam Shady himself. You know, everybody, thank all of y'all. Um, I know I had that plan myself, you know, to have a big old get together of all the great minds in the sport, you know, that know what they're talking about. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it, it ended up happening, you know, on Shady's channel. But I'm hoping to do something like that myself, you know, in the future. And I mean, by future, I mean in a couple weeks when the NAL championship happens. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, so in the NAL, we got to discuss what actually, you know, the, we got to discuss the game first, at least. So Carolina, San Antonio played again, second straight week in a row. This time San Antonio was at home against Carolina. And fortunately for the Gunstinkers, they have just fallen off the cliff. They're now third in the NAL standings. They lost 6 to 345. It is what it is. Rather unfortunate. And then Jacksonville just beat the brakes off of West Texas, 70 to 25. So Jacksonville has clinched the number one seed. It'll be Orlando, Jacksonville, Carolina, San Antonio. Now, what has to be determined, though, is is Carolina going to host that first round playoff game or is San Antonio going to host it? That's what needs to be determined. West Texas is eliminated, obviously. And, of course, you know, the bombshell of all bombshells dropped on July the 18th, which was that Tuesday, which the AFL said was going to be, you know, something big. And, ultimately, two teams from the NAL have left, at least officially. That has been officially confirmed. So, West Texas said, we're out and their season is over after next week anyway, so they are out. Jacksonville even told them in the tweet, all right, bye-bye, see you. We don't want you, you know, we don't want to see you anyway. You can go have fun in the AFL. Um, Orlando, you know, no Nate Starling, no Mike Quarter as owners anymore. John Chaney will be the only owner left, and he will take the Preds with them to the new AFL. Fayetteville's still looking for some investors, I believe, and they're teasing something pretty big. Ultimately, I don't think that market's going to work out in the long run. Don't just pack it up, boys. It's time to pack it up. I'm sorry. It's Fayetteville. Not a good area to have an arena football team. I'm sorry. Couldn't draw a 1,000 fans to the games. Was looking for investors all season. It's just facts. Um, the IFL... Well, again, the game just ended. So Bay Area was able to survive Tucson's comeback. They won 46-34. Um, Arizona also had to come back against Naz, but ultimately way too many turnovers by Drew Powell and company, way too many bad defensive plays. Northern Arizona beats Arizona again, 62-53. Massachusetts had a lead against Sioux Falls. They were up 17 to nothing, and then it was 26 to 8 at one point. But then ultimately, Sioux Falls was able to come back, and Lorenzo Brown, Curtis Riggs, and the Storm move on, and they will go to Frisco to take on the Frisco Fighters, who just demolished the Quad City Steamless. I mean, EJ Hilliard and company just looked awful in that game. They have had an awful, awful turnover. To turn uh, into the season, you know, similar to San Antonio, how they've had a bad end to the season where it's just been loss at the loss, questionable loss at the questionable loss, you know, the Tulsa game, the Iowa game, and now this one. So Frisco will take on Sioux Falls next Saturday night, and Bay Area will also take on Northern Arizona next Saturday night. So we'll have a 
pretty damn good next Saturday tonight as, you know, it'll be the semifinals of the IFL, the final week of the NAL regular season. And at this point, the AFL, let's talk about it. Again, this is a big part of the discussion from yesterday. The only thing that's confirmed uh, right now are the two teams from the NAL and a couple of cities that have confirmed you know, arenas or owners or, or something along those lines. Everything else is very questionable at this point. In fact, the whole operation is questionable because, again, you know, 16 teams. And then, you know, there was a article that said the AFL was trying to move to 22 or 24 teams. Like, not even after the first season, which is an insane amount. So, Travel Gaines, very involved with the AFL you know, tried to get Jacksonville and all, but Jacksonville obviously said no. If Arizona said no, if all the CIF teams said no, <laughs> come on. And Albany is a different situation, which we'll talk about in a moment. San Antonio was also listed, and keep in mind, this is first listed by TMZ of all places. TMZ. Uh, but this is disproven as, again, St. Louis has been confirmed to have the family arena um, out in St. Louis, St. Paul, Minnesota. I believe it's St. Paul. You know, of course, there's already an arena football team coming to Minnesota, but it's in Duluth, and it's for a different league. And this um, AFL team apparently has female-led ownership. The Philadelphia Soul have been confirmed. Ron Jaworski will be involved in some capacity, apparently. But everybody else is completely blindsided and doesn't know what in the hell's going on here. Boise, unless it's the Idaho Horsemen, probably no. They don't. They don't have. They don't have the arena for Austin. Now, Austin, you weren't going to be able to use, you know, Austin, 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 Texas. You weren't going to be able to use, you know, the Frank Irwin Center anyway, because that that got demol. That's getting demolished. Cincinnati, they can't play at the Heritage Bank Center. So, you know, you know, that's that's a no go. Bakersfield, you know, California. I mean. Bakersfield, come on. Salem, Oregon, no arena there. Lake Charles, everybody was completely blindsided. There was so many articles, so many different things coming out, you know, and it's just like, what are you talking about? What AFL? There is no AFL coming here. What do you mean? So it doesn't make any sense. It's very questionable. Everything's pretty questionable. I put up a poll, you know, that says, you know, how many teams are actually going to play in the AFL next year? I don't think... If it does get launched, I don't think it'll be 16. And realistically, that's where you should stop in arena football. That's where you should stop in the indoor game. That's what I've said for three seasons now. That's where you should stop. That's the number where you should stop is 16 teams. No more, no less. Uh, so, you know, Tallahassee is still kind of in a, you know, Still trying to work things out there as far as getting information about Tallahassee, Nashville, Denver. I know Shady, you know, wanted a team in Denver. And I know there's another guy on Arena fan who really wanted a team in Denver, but you know, nobody said anything, you know, as far as you know, the arenas in Denver. Everett, Washington. Again, I don't know how. Chicago, don't know how. I know there's this thing called Humble that the AFL partnered with, but ultimately there's just nothing to go off of right now. There's just really nothing to go off of in this announcement. It's just very questionable. Leaves a lot of things to be desired. Now, there's every there's a lot of things to nosh on here to end today. And Albany, again, you know, we talked about Albany with the AFL stuff. More than likely, due to workers' comp, will not get a team in 2024. Maybe in 2025. This is the same thing that kept Bismarck, you know, from coming back until, you know, it was, until, you know, now Bismarck can indeed come back. It's the same thing that killed the Oklahoma Flying Aces, and, you know, it is what it is. So Albany just have to wait. It's been burned three times now, so, you know, it needs a little bit of time to incubate. Uh, the third, the Arena League team, the Tim Brown led lead, they'll that that team will be called the Kansas City Goats. So only the Duluth team needs a name. The AIF, their West Virginia team out in Wheeling will be called the Miners. 
North Texas, the Bulls, they said they will be in the Fort Worth area in 2024, which means if they're going to be in Fort Worth, that means they're going to be in Dickey's Arena sharing that arena with, you know, the Fort Worth. Uh, I mean, not the Fort Worth. I almost want to say the Fort Worth Panthers because that's what they should be called. The Panther City Lacrosse Club and then a bunch of basketball stuff and then a bunch of, you know, other events like concerts and whatever. Of the Vegas Kings, you know, they were supposed to play the Capital City Cyclones. Instead, that did not happen. I looked into it. There was supposed to be a stream or whatever. I couldn't find the stream. It said, oh, no, the stream doesn't work or something like that. So they played the Las Vegas Saints like an outdoor eight-man team in the Arizona District. And keep in mind, that is Alton Walker's team. That is the commissioner's team, the Capital City Cyclones. They played a single game this year. What an absolute joke. And then the CIF, a pet, a potentially there is a split happening. Now, things will have to be confirmed more over the next few weeks. But Omaha, Topeka, and Sioux City, they're all going to leave the CIF, which means, and I know the Oklahoma Flying Aces were included in this report, but again, the Flying Aces are dead, so no reason to talk about them. But the Salina Liberty, Billings, the Outlaws, the Gillette Mustangs, the Southwest Kansas Storm, and the Rapid City Marshals, they will stay in the CIF at this point. And that's the split is going to happen. Topeka, again, I'm very shocked that Topeka is even still here because they should be dead. They, should, they were supposed to die after last year. But they stayed around, you know, and then they had all these controversies this season. Um, and I thought, you know, you know, because now it's the middle of July, but, you know, or rather it's the end of July, closing into August. So, you know, I'm thinking this this was the only CIF team that I could see. Shy was the Topeka Tropics, but instead, no, none of that. So a split is happening if, if it is believed to be believed. Omaha, Sioux City, Topeka all could be jumping up to the IFL. Potentially, maybe a, a NAL, maybe, you know, they do their own thing. I don't know. But everybody else, who knows? I don't know what this means right now because I haven't. It's it's another thing that blindsided me, came out of nowhere. And, I, and we were talking about this, you know, Saturday morning that there was supposed to be something big in the CIF happening. You know, I didn't think it'd be this. So, Yeah. So we're going to get on it with it. The IFL, you know, the Western Conference Final, or the Western Conference Championship, the Eastern Conference Championship next weekend. Seating on the line in the NAL for the Carolina Cobras and the San Antonio Gunslingers, the two seed and the three seed on the line. Who will get that home playoff game next week? And we'll still try to keep looking into whatever the AFL is doing because there's just a lot going on with that. So with that being said, Big Boy Sports signing out, and I'm having difficulties with my mouse, so I'll put up a thumbnail later. Take care, have a good night, and I'll see you all next Saturday night at 11 o'clock.